All right, let's take a look at the actual circulatory system itself now. By the end of this module, you'll be able to list the components of the circulating system, appreciate the relative size of the pressure drops through each section of that system, know how the pressures developed in these sections of the system, and also how the pressure developed in the systems may be varied by changing some of the parameters within the system, like things like changing the, uh, the bit nozzle size or the pipe diameters and so on, how, how that might affect these pressures. And we'll move on to, while we're discussing the system, we'll talk about the bit and then we'll talk a little bit in this section about optimizing bit hydraulics as well. So let's just have a look at a schematic of the actual circulate, circulatory system here. We've basically got um, a borehole over here and we've got, uh, this, is, this stuff's all on the rig here. We've got an active pit full of mud, uh, mud being sucked up through the pumps pumped through the standpipe, down the drill string, through the uh, drill pipe, the heavyweight drill pipe, the BHA, out the bit, up the annulus, and back over the shakers into the surface uh, sand traps and back to the pits again. So I've divided this up into uh, handy sections, if you like. We've got P1 for pressure uh, drop number one through the surface system. P2, um, the, basically the drill pipe, which is a, a, a very long piece of the system, the drill pipe. Then we've got P3, that's the pressure as we're coming through the uh, BHA. P4, the annulus, well, P4 is the annulus around the outside of the BHA. Uh, PB was the bit pressure drop, the, the pressure drop as the uh, fluid exits the jets of the system. P5 is the annulus around the uh, drill pipe. So P2 and P3 are internal pressure drops inside the string. PB, the bit pressure drop. P4 and P5 are two sections of annulus. And basically the P, PC, or the total circulating pressure, is the addition of all of these pressure drops throughout the system. So the PC, total circulating pressure, is actually the pressure you would measure if you put a pressure gauge here or at the bottom of the standpipe or at the pumps basically and it's the pressure required it's the pressure energy required basically so the representation of the energy required to circulate mud from this point all the way around that system to come out and it's lost all its energy by the time it comes out starting to go through the shakers so that PC is your total circulating pressure or your standpipe pressure so uh, We'll have a look now at uh, the sizes of these different pressure drops. Um, just look at this on a graph. Now, if we had a total sandpipe pressure of somewhere just over 2,000 psi in this case, what would be the uh, relative sizes of these of these pressure drops? Well, basically, first one we could look at is the drill pipe. As you can see, it's uh, somewhere in the region of 700 psi. I mean, this really depends on the length, on the depth of the wellbore. I mean, we've got here about, well, just over 10,000 feet from here to here, and we've got seven, seven or 800 psi through the drill pipe. So quite a significant pressure drop. A large, long piece of pipe. Um, the next one to look at, we've got the drill collars. We've got a pressure drop through here which is another couple of hundred PSI, but nothing major. You know, there might be MWD tools or motors in there, which would uh, perhaps make that pressure drop a little bit larger. But the, the main one is the drill pipe and the pressure drop through the bit nozzles as well. This will vary, obviously, depending on nozzle size. We'll have a look at, have a look at that later. But uh, the drill pipe and the bit nozzles are likely to be your two highest uh, pressure drops in the entire system. The drill collars and the annulus, if you have a look at this, this is only a couple of hundred PSI as well. Uh, the drill collars and the annular pressure drops are, are pretty small in comparison to your internal drill pipe, which may include heavy weight and the, uh, and the bit nozzles as well. So the surface lines, we'll start off with the first, the first pressure drop in that diagram that I showed you, P1, the surface lines. The surface lines, although they are relatively minor when compared to the magnitude of the overall system pressure drop, they can be ca calculated with a reasonable degree of accuracy. 
And as a rule of thumb, the surface pressure drop is usually somewhere in the range of about 100 to 600 psi. It won't be much more than 600 on many rigs. It's dependent basically on the length of the pipe work. So how long are the pipes from the pumps up to the end of the standpipe? Uh, the number of bends in that pipe work and also the fluid rheology and the density, basically. Okay, I'll basically briefly describe uh, what happens as, as fluid rounds a bend in the surface system. Um, basically, as the, flu as the fluid flows around a bend in the pipe, there's a force which is acting perpendicular, well, basically, which basically means at 90 degrees to that bend. So the pressure, uh, what you end up with is something like a, it's like a normal force, which, uh, you know, in well planning, it's the, the, the force perpendicular to the, the curve that you're your pipes lying around. Uh, you've got fluid being pumped around in this direction, around the bend, or, or in this direction, around the bend. And there's, there's a higher pressure on the outside. P1 is actually greater than P2. Uh, so there's a, a lower pressure here, a higher pressure there. And what you end up with is sort of counter-rotating vortices going, going on as, as, the pressure, as the fluid goes around that bend. And this uh, extra flow, if you like, and coupled with the the differential pressure ends up increasing the pressures, pressure required to pump the fluid around that bend. More is going to be greater than the, flu, the pressure required to actually just pump, a flu, pump fluid through a pipe of this length if it was straight. So the surf, in the surface system, the number of beds, bends are actually uh, important to take into account because they're a source of extra pressure drop. Uh, that's, uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to this and then draw your attention to the fact that none of our software actually takes into account the surface system bends in the pipework. Most hydraulics packages will actually give you um, choices for surface lines as follows. You'll have type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. And some allow for also user defined or top drive systems, TDS also. Now what do type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 mean? And I'll, I'll, I'll try and explain that by showing you what you can select within Insight and within Wellplan and so on. Um, <clears throat> you've got uh, Type 1, well basically this is Insight. You've got four types that you can choose in Insight. You click on this little icon here, the button up at the top in your Geometry Editor. And uh, when you click on that, this user interface opens up. If you pull down the box here, um, you can choose type 1, type 2, type 3, or type 4, or you can choose to define your own if you wish. Um, and what it's got here is a length of 650 and an ID of 3. So 650 feet, ID of 3 inches um, for type 1. Then you've got 250 with an ID of 3, and 150 with an ID of 3, and 100 with an ID of 3. Now no pipe work on surface is actually going to be 650 feet long with a 3 inch ID, but that's actually what it's uh, it's working out the average over, over the entire system. And you choose one of these types that are actually closest to your surface system. Um, it's also possible to manually enter surface pipe work in the Insight user interface. So you can actually go in and type in, well, we've got 40 foot of 3 inch ID, we've got 45 foot of 2 inch ID, another 20 foot of 2 inch ID, and another 40 feet of 2.25 inch ID. And although it says number of bends here, it doesn't actually take that into account. I think sometime in the future it may actually take it into account, but I could put in 90 bends there or I could put in zero bends and the pressure drop that it calculates will still be the same at present. Um, however, this is giving you the option to actually def define your own surface system. So previously when you had types 1, 2, 3 and 4, they were based around the old Kelly drilling system, which you may still encounter on land rigs, some off small offshore rigs as well. But uh, more, more and more rigs these days have top drives, therefore you'll probably end up having to define a system with an insight to represent your surface pipework, rather than use the types. Looking at well plan, we've got four types. If you, type, if you select in this box here, surface equipment type, if you selected IADC, this surface equipment data would give you the option of four different types. Now these are basically the same, the same uh, types as uh, were defined in Insight, except it's actually saying, right, we've got 40 foot of 3 inch standpipe, 45 foot of 2 inch hose, 4, uh, four foot of 2 inch swivel, and 40 foot of 2.25 inch Kelly. 
and that's for type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. So it's the same, same things. Insight uh, broke, uh, didn't break it down like that. Insight just said we've got, say, 650 feet of 3-inch ID, which is the average of all these figures, pretty much. Um, again, these types, based on the Kelly system, if you don't have a Kelly system, they're not really applicable to a top drive system. So Wellplan actually has the uh, option to put in a custom rotary system, and then you can uh, type in your pump discharge, line your standpipe, your hose, and then your top drive stack up height, which is basically defined here in this diagram. So on your rig, you would uh, measure all these things or get the measurements from the tool pusher and stick the values in. Again, it's, it's just lengths and IDs. It's not, it's not much different from the other, um, from, from Insight's defined one. You're just putting in a length and an ID, and then it's working out a pressure from that. So the types are based around the Kelly system and can't be applied to a top drive system accurately. So it pays to know how the surface pressure drops calculated. Um, I'll just go through what these types are and where the values come from. Um, as I said before, you've got standpipe, hose, swivel and Kelly, types 1, 2, 3 and 4, and then you've got various lengths and IDs, and then you can have an equivalent length, and a, if you say 3.286 inch ID, you could have an equivalent length in feet of those, uh, of that uh, equivalent ID. That table can basically be um, simplified and you can just put a constant into an equation here. We've got the delta pressure equals this constant C times the density, which is the density of your fluid, multiplied by the flow rate, which is Q, divided by 100, all to the power of 1.86, which is called the flow exponent. 1.86 you find in a lot of equations regarding flow. Um, so this, this basically is your surface pressure loss equation and C is a constant which takes into account all those uh, um, diameters and lengths and type 1 would give you a, a C value of 1, type 2 would give you 0.36, type 3.22 and type 4.15 and that would give you the same values as typing in those, uh, you know, if you were to do it by hand as typing those, those values into Insight or Wellplan or something very close anyway. Okay, so P2 and P3, basically taking the, uh, the drill pipe and heavyweight drill pipe in your system, they will have a massive effect on the hydraulics of the system. And small variations in the diameter will have a large impact on pressure required to pump fluid through that pipe. The reason for, a, for this statement is basically the, the length of the pipe. You've got miles or kilometers of several miles, several kilometers of actual drill pipe in there. And uh, so if you change the diameter of, of the pipe that you're, you've got there, the cumulative effect of that will be quite significant. And basically, if the pipe diameter is decreased, then the same volume being pumped will travel faster through the pipe. I've already discussed this within the course. Therefore, the pressure, which is actually dependent on that fluid velocity, will increase with the increase in the velocity. And it requires more energy to pump a spe specific volume through a smaller diameter at a specific volumetric rate. So basically, if you're uh, the smaller the diameter, if you're maintaining the flow rate, it takes a higher pressure to get it through here than it took to get it through here. It's uh, fairly simple, and the pressure is de uh, de determined by the velocity. If you work, if you look at the uh, um, pressure equations, uh, velocity figures quite highly in there. Now, despite the uh, fact that the industry has been actually using drill pipe for 100 years, it's only very recently that any real thought's actually gone into the optimization of drill pipe design. And uh, over the last while, 5 and 7 eighths drill pipe um, has actually been used. It has been designed specifically with hydraulics optimization in mind rather than just designed with <coughs> ease, of, ease of building or whatever else they've had in mind before. Um, it has basically 5 and 7 eighths pipe has advantages over 5 inch pipe in that you've actually got a, a larger ID um, so you, you can pump more fluid through it, you can pump, fast, you can pump faster through, through a 5 and 7 eighths pipe with the larger ID. Um, 
keeping the pressure drop low. And it's also got a larger uh, OD, outside diameter, which um, reduces your annular clearance, which also increases uh, your hole cleaning efficiency. It's lighter as well because sometimes people have used 6 and 5 eighths pipe instead of 5 inch pipe, but that's pretty heavy, thick walled stuff. And uh, not all rigs can handle that, especially on deep wells. Therefore, uh, 5 and 7 eighths gives you that increase in diameter, also an in, um, a better increase in OD than the 6 and 5 eighths, uh, better trade off in, in, in ID rather than the 6 and 5 eighths on the market. And so it's easier to handle and it gives you, it gives you some of the some of the benefits of using larger pipe as well. Um, I discussed some of this in, in, one, in the hole cleaning uh, presentation also. So uh, you can, I'll show you that graphically in the, when, when you uh, have a look at the, the hole, hole cleaning discussion. Now, pipe losses take place inside the pipe and also the BHA and therefore you can have some special losses for BHA components like motors and various MWD tools and so on. And how you work out the uh, pressure losses inside the pipe and, and the BHA, etc., you, you use the fluid models, which we've discussed. Uh, you could use Bingham Plastic or Power Law, but preferentially you would use Herschel Bulkley. And they're discussed in the Flow Regimes module. Now, if you had a motor, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that if you have a motor in the string, maybe between 5 and 20 percent of the flow may be diverted through the bearings if it's a mud-cooled motor. So that um, flow is actually going out in the BHA. It's, it's leaving the uh, BHA and it doesn't actually end up at the bit. So the bit pressure drop is reduced if you have a motor in there, or not all motors, but uh, uh, mud-cooled motors, mud-cooled bearing motors. Now looking at the annulus next, P4 and P5 on that diagram, there, that's the annular pressure drops past the BHA, which is P4 and P5 which is past the drill pipe as the mud flows up the entire wellbore. Now you use the, again you use the fluid, fluid models to work out these pressure losses, Herschel Bulkley being preferential to the other two, and uh, they're also discussed, um, how, you, how you determine the pressure is discussed in the flow regimes module as well. <coughs> 